Every single year, the Pokemon Company International does something that makes your cards not usable for competitive play. They rotate cards. What does that mean? Well, once a season, the Pokemon TCG and the Pokemon Company International decide that these certain block of cards are no longer usable for competitive play to keep spicing up the game and freshening it up as we move forward. Unlike other card games, we don't have an unlimited format or an expanded format at the current moment we did in the past, but we only play in the Pokemon TCG standard format. Officially, as of January 26th in Japan, the E block of cards, if you look at your Pokemon TCG card, in the bottom left, there's a little bit of a letter in a block, and the E cards will no longer be available to play. Only F, G, and H will be available in Japan, and we will follow suit almost certainly here in North America and everywhere else in the world by April. What does that mean? Well, in simple terms, that means we can only use Brilliant Stars cards and onwards for standard legal play. So if you've got stuff in there from Chilling Rain or Battle Styles, get those out of your playables box. You're not going to need those come April. So today's video, my name is Rahul Reddy, and we're going to be talking about all the top decks that currently exist in the format and how they're going to adapt or change in the upcoming uh, days. By come April, these decks will all lose some pivotal pieces and how it will affect them. Well, I'll break that down for you as I am a competitive TCG player and ranked top 16 in the world. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. It would help out the channel a ton. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first deck, this list of decks here is the highest performing decks in the Battle Styles 2 Paradox Rift format, which is currently ongoing at the moment. These decks have performed over and over and over again, and you can see here that we're going to look at our top 10 asterisks, 11 decks, to see which decks lose what cards that will help you better prepare visually moving forward into the 2024 format. Our first up, we have Charizard EX, the kingpin of the format. It's been dominating time and time again. I'm using Azul Garcia Griego's regional championship winning list. You can see here a lot of the pieces are pretty standard. Charizard and Pidgeot coming out together in the same set. But what does this deck lose? Well, here's a visual representation. Yeah, that's it. It only loses a total of eight cards from the existing pool that it's been using. But those eight cards are very impactful. Losing something like Battle VIP Pass means that the early game setup is severely stunted, as well as using Celebrations Mew, which helps out quite a ton in the early game setup as well, finding that rare candy, finding an Ultra Ball, or even finding that Battle VIP Pass on turn one to set up. Level Ball is also leaving the format, meaning that finding your Charmander, Charmeleon, Pidgey on the early turns becomes a little bit more difficult. How does the deck choose to adapt from there? Well, I think you're going to have to start playing heavier counts of things like Nest Ball, maybe even like Feather Ball, um, stuff that can just be burned, used as an item, something that Arvin can find for you. Um, but you need to find these ball cards that help you search and set up your board because you're basically losing one of the best search cards ever search and set up cards ever printed in the form of battle vip pass a nest ball to get a charmander is just not the same as getting a battle vip pass for two charmanders or a charmander and a pidgey now losing justified gloves does make the mirror match a little bit more interesting because you no longer have a plus 30 damage boost to win at the four prize turn maneuvering that last turn or two is going to be a little bit more difficult for both charizard players and so it'd be interesting to watch that unfold next up we have gardevoir this deck has been very powerful for quite a while now. Gardevoir EX with its Psychic Embrace ability coming out in the Scarlet and Violet expansion can really beef up your board quite a bit and make any Psychic attacker a threat immediately. What does Gardevoir lose? It seems like most of these cards probably stick around. Well, unfortunately for you guys who are Gardevoir fans, it is probably the most affected deck of them all. Losing a majority of its search engine in four Battle of Yuffie Pass, four Level Ball, and two Fog Crystal you're gutted. You can't find those energies early. You can't find your Curlias early anymore or your Ralts's, and you lose Battle VIP Pass. That's terrible. We lose almost our entire search engine and the deck has to evolve. And in addition to that, prizing Curlia is worse than ever. Mirage Step is no longer here. We lose our get out of jail free card for a poor setup on turn one. So now Gardevoir, which already had a little bit of trouble setting up with all of these search cards, has to do it without them. Uh, we lose Shining Arcana Gardevoir with the Brainwave attack, which is one of the most powerful attacks in the game that had technically unlimited damage. Uh, being able to lose this draw card plus this attacker 
does make the deck have to work a little bit differently because now you no longer have this card and Sasha and V, which technically both had infinite damage available to you. Avery has been more of a new splash in the deck as a draw three effect, and I'm sure this card can be replaced at some point in time with something else, but Gardevoir has left now with fewer attacking options in the form of things just like Screamtail or Cresselia, but how is Gardevoir going to evolve and adapt? It's only time will tell. Third up, we have Giratina V-Star. Uh, one of the better Lost Box variants, more consistent, has access to attacks like Abyss Seeking that'll just propel the game forward and add more cards to your hand as we move forward. But Giratina is going to lose some very cool pieces moving forward. So for your Giratina fans out there, I am sorry. Giratina doesn't lose a lot. It loses 10 cards or three cards specifically in 10 counts. But these three cards are some of the most crucial cards to making Giratina work. Battle of AMP Pass helps you get set up as quickly as possible, just like every other deck. But finding things like Giratina on turn one or your Comfies on turn one is just so crucial to moving through the game. Giratina losing Escape Rope is just another Switch card that makes its way out of the format. Sure, you can just up your Switch counts or your Switch cart counts, and this deck will do just fine. But the most pivotal card that's leaving this deck and the format is Path to the Peak. Path to the Peak reads, Pokemon with a rule box in play, both yours and your opponent have no abilities. Pokemon V, GX, etc. have rule boxes. Now this was the linchpin for this deck. You would often get down to a deficit, use Countercatcher to bring up something, stick it in the active, play Path to the Peak, and Roxanne your opponent to put them at two cards, a third on the top, an unusable board state, and Sableye to be picking off their attackers or whatever support Pokemon they have established. This combo is so scary that a lot of decks can't really play around it. But if there's no path to the peak, there's nothing to play around anymore. Next up, we have Mew VMAX. I, I'm not going to say too much here because you Mew VMAX enthusiasts know what I'm about to show you. The deck is gone. Mew VMAX as a card will finally rotate. You don't need to put Drapion in your deck. You don't need to put Spear Tomb in your deck anymore. It's gone. The VMAX is finally going to rotate being one of the most consistent and most oppressive decks since its release due to Genesex fusion strike system being one of the most overpowered abilities i have ever read in my life pokemon printed not one but two direct counters to the deck and well it still finds ways to make its way to the top of the tables over and over again but rotation will get it nothing can stop the power of daddy pikachu Next up, we have Maridon, a deck that has found itself in the limelight time and time again because of Maridon's tandem unit ability, which naturally acts as a setup unit, and Flaffy being able to propel us through the end game, using cards like Electric Generator in the early game to power up our board and just simply try to run our opponents over, take the first prize, and be aggressive. This is one of the more aggressive decks in the format that will lose some crucial pieces. Well, we've got to find out which ones. It's not a what. The deck doesn't lose a lot, but losing Flaffy does mean the end game gets a lot riskier and you are a lot more reliant on these electric generators in the early game. Whiffing one in the early game didn't really feel as bad in the current format, but next format, when you don't have Dynamo to lean back on to just get another energy into play, get another attacker set up, whiffing that generator could be the game decider. Escape Rope was also a very good way to move out of the active and force your opponents to bring up something they might not have wanted to do, which we're also losing that, but we can just play other switching cards and we'll have a Prism Catcher, or Ultra, Super, Mega, Fudge, Rocket Catcher coming up soon. Now, this deck was another deck that abused Path to the Peak to make our opponents have a little bit of a slower time while our board is just filled with firepower and gas and just getting in there. So maybe the deck has to evolve to a different form. Maybe we have to rely on Iron Hands a little bit more. Maybe it's just a Raikou angle. Maybe there's some Lightning Attackers we haven't really looked at yet. But that's for the future. We'll get there when we get there. See you in April, Maradon. Next up, we have a bunch of flavors of Lost Box. If you're a comfy enthusiast, never fear. We're still here. This deck now is Sable Zard. Using Radiant Charizard and Sableye, this deck took down a regional championship in Europe, and it will do it maybe again in the future. Uh, playing cards like Vacuum, Close Experiment, and heavy switching cards, this deck is built to try to get 10 into the Lost Zone as soon as possible and start using cards like Sableye and then use Radiant Zard multiple times if humanly possible. What does this deck lose? It doesn't seem like it loses a lot. 
That's where you're wrong, my friend. It loses a lot of very pivotal resources. Your early game setup with Battle VIP Pass no longer exists. Sure, you can play Nest Balls, but this deck already is playing three Nest Balls. So, can't add four more to a deck that has three. And then you have Fog Crystal, a card that is very good in this build specifically because you can find those Psychics, that Sableye, or that Comfy, giving us effectively two more Nest Balls, but they also find the Psychic Energies. With only three in the deck, it's kind of a lifesaver at times. Don't have that anymore. Lost Box decks played a staple of four Switch Cart and four Escape Rope for, well, since Comfy came out, we also had Scoop Up Net, but that left. To join it, Escape Rope is leaving the format as well. What are you going to do now? Play four copies of Switch? You're not putting your opponents in weird situations anymore. Whatever's in the active is staying in the active for your opponent. That might be very crucial for Lost Box decks moving forward, especially with Radiant Charizard maybe not hitting the numbers we need anymore. And then two very crucial supporters. Raihan makes this deck flow. Getting a basic energy from your discard pile, attaching it to something like Radiant Charizard or Sableye or even your active Comfy, giving you a pivot, is really what gets this deck going. Where you, then you'll get one card from your deck, like a Mirage Gate, like a Counter Catcher, like a TM Devo. This was such a good card of the deck that won't be here anymore. And then you have Clara. Clara gets two basic Pokemon or two Pokemon and two basic energy from your discard and puts them in your hand. And this deck just wants to keep recycling attackers like Sableye and Cramorant and Radiant Charizard. You're going to have to start playing cards like Miriam, and they're not going to your hand. They're going straight into your deck. Sure, you got Super Odd, but sometimes that's not enough. Being able to put a Sableye into your hand and use Lost Mine immediately, that's a different feeling. Next up, we have the Torn Box. This is a spin by using cards like Kyogre for your late game, and Giratina to use things like Star Requiem, and then powerful attackers like Iron Hands and Roaring Moon to just hit the win con button on certain matchups if you need to. This deck uses turbo strategies to go aggressively into Kyogre and Aqua Storm to the end game. This deck does lose some pieces. Well, namely Kyogre. Not having that Kyogre end game with Energy Cycler means that you can't play all these plethora of energy typings because you don't have two more ways to get energy back. Sure, Super Odd is cool and all, but if you're confidently hitting Pokestop every turn, you might have some Pokemon you got to put back at some point too. You can't put, you can't be super adding only energies back consistently. You got to do other stuff too. Now, you also lose Rope and VIP Pass, but I feel like we've talked about that over and over again with Lost Box decks. So I'm not going to bore you guys to death. These cards do impact this deck quite a bit. So Lost Box will have to take a different form and maybe Switch becomes the most important card in this deck. Next up, we have Snorlax Stall, a deck that everyone has been clamoring to get rid of. I don't think it's going anywhere, unfortunately. Block Snorlax is pretty powerful, especially given Countercatcher being back in the format. But let's see what this deck that's so degenerate loses. Doesn't lose a lot, but it does lose its Battle VIP Pass. It's Echoing Horn, which means one extra way to get your Pokemon stuck in the active. Echoing Horn out of the discard, Erica's Invitation out of the hand, makes for a stuck between a rock and a hard place, honestly. But it does lose a crucial card in Peonia, which was the only way for the deck to search cards out of its prize cards if something got prized. And this deck doesn't take prize cards. So if you're one of Team Yell's Cheer or G Giacomo or uh, Mimikyu got prized, this was the way to get there. But now you can't do that anymore. Now if one of these cards is prized, it's staying there for the whole game. So if you're only playing one Mimikyu, well, tough luck. If you're only playing one Yell's Cheer, that's unfortunate. So this deck might have to bump up some counts and play less greedy. Um, it also is a Sydney, which was a great way to look at your opponent's hand and mill some of those stadiums, those pesky stadiums, or special energy. But recently, special energy haven't been as relevant. We'll see if that changes with whatever new special energy gets revealed up in the Paradox Rift format. Don't really know what Avery's doing in here besides being a menace to get Pokemon in the discard, but I don't think we're going to miss Avery too much. Next up, we've got Rapid Strike Urshifu Inteleon, a deck that's near and dear to my heart. And unfortunately, we're going to have to say Sayonara. The Rapid Strike archetype will be leaving with Battle Styles in the format. And as its namesake states, everything that's got that Rapid Strike tag is gone. Our Italians, our Urshifus, our Octillery, Matacham, Corinna's, Rapid Strike Energy, Tower of Waters. The deck is dead. It's got it. We literally don't have Pokemon anymore to play. Pack it up, boys. It's been a good run. Next up, we have Entei Iron Valiant, a deck that got second at the Latin American International Championships and has taken the format by storm. Up till now, it's been regarded as a cheese deck. Either you win on turn one, or you don't get to play the game anymore. You just kind of lose. But what does this deck lose? Iron Valiant's Tachyon Bit seems like a pretty good attack, or ability, and then you have Future Booster Energy Capsule to attack with it. And they've been a 
bunch of really cool Paradox cards revealed, right? Future cards. So maybe Iron Valiant has a place in the format. Well, you don't lose a lot. You lose Escape Rope, which does hurt. That's four less switching cards that you wanted out of your 12. But maybe there's going to be another switch card. Maybe we go up on Jet Energies. Maybe there's a hope for us after all. Maybe there isn't. Who knows? Metacham with its Yoga Loop attack was very crucial for this deck to just steal extra turns and stunt your opponent's setup. Not so much take that extra turn for your own sake, but just making it so your opponent gets one less turn to set up while you are putting a lot of pressure on the board. But maybe that's the nail in the coffin. Losing that card might just be everything. That's all she wrote. Pack it up. Next up, we have Chen Pao, a deck that was so popular and dominant in the format for quite a while, but it's been falling off. The deck hasn't seen as much play. Its aggressive playstyle has gone down. And I think this deck is one of the decks that gets hurt the most with the upcoming rotation. And let me show you why. You lose four VIP pass and four cross switcher. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot, but this deck really relies on Pokestop. Being able to find searchable item cards with Pokestop and just aggressively moving through your deck is what this deck really excels at. Losing four copies of cross switcher may seem like a big, uh, not a big deal, but you just can't gust up things as effectively anymore. A deck that plays only Irida on its first turn a lot of the time really needed that Battle VIP Pass to get three pieces out of your deck. Being able to find Frigibax, Frigibax, and maybe a Bidoof on turn one with the VIP Pass and finding the Frigi on Irida was just way too good. Or double Frigibax in Radiant Greninja. Now you're left with a decision. Do I get a Frigibax and a Nest Ball? This deck's already playing three Nest Ball. What four search cards can we add that save us how can we find more ways to set up our board on turn one and two already being not the most inherently consistent deck this deck loses two modicums of consistency that might honestly hurt it too much in the long run to stay consistent with the big boys the vip pass was a format defining card and losing it you can see the impact on a lot of these decks finally we have roaring moon a deck that should be a lot better than it is but for some reason it's just not this deck plays a slew of item cards backed up by Professor Sada's Vitality just to get the ball rolling and get yourself set up and into a better position. This deck probably doesn't lose too much. It actually gains a couple of tools as we move forward because, you know, we are in the Paradox Rift. Area Zero, guys. Who's with me? Now, this doesn't lose anything at all, really, for Battle of Yippee Pass, which I don't think the deck really needs. Just put four Nest Ball in here. We can actually call it a day. This... This actually makes sense to us. Getting that Squawk Ability turn one, uh, plus six. Let's see some new cards. Getting a Roaring Moon, sure, I, I like that. VIP Pass was a little bit of a win more card and set up more card. You just needed one VIP Pass to kind of set up, and we can find two Nest Pauls, no problem. Don't worry about us. We'll get there. So not too big of a change here with this deck, but Galarian Moltres was an interesting card. This Energy Switch combo only worked because Galarian Moltres was a free Professor Sada every turn and just let you set up your board in ways that allowed you to boss to close out the game. You set up this threat that was in inevitability uh, oftentimes. So losing that card plus energy switch or losing that card means that energy switch combo decks might not work the same way we want to anymore. Maybe Roaring Moon has to take a different form. There might be some other ancient partners for it to pick up or some other cards you can play. We'll find out when the format changes. From me to you guys, that is your first look at the Pokemon TCG rotation. Hopefully, we can adjust accordingly. And if you're not attending the European International Championships, this won't be a problem for you. Again, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. And you guys can check out all things Pokemon TCG competitive on this YouTube channel right here. With that being said, Happy New Year and enjoy the 2024 Pokemon season, guys.